19 awarded at the National Youth Councilors Awards Ceremony. Canadian University remembers the late Roosevelt Douglas and Capuchin Resource Center receives five computers. Thank you for joining us on National Focus. I'm Mervyn Matthew. And I'm Shakira Pierce. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. Yell and tell if someone tries to abuse you. Tell until someone believes you and they do something about it. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlboro Street or call 266-3020 or 266-3080. Welcome back. October 1, 2016 marked the 16th anniversary of the death of Prime Minister Roosevelt Douglas and Canada remembers. This year, Ryerson University in Canada celebrated the late Roosevelt Douglas in the Akua Benjamin Legacy Project. The Akua Benjamin Legacy Project honors the tremendous contributions of activists, academic and community leaders who focused on anti-black racism and resistance. The late Prime Minister was honored among six others this year with a public lecture and video documentary highlighting his work to defend individuals of African descent. Roosevelt Rusey Douglas was born on October 15, 1941 to the late Robert Bernard Douglas, a wealthy businessman, coconut farmer and conservative politician who named his boys after world statesmen. Rosie Douglas went to Canada to pursue his studies at the Sir George Williams University in Montreal. He became involved in the fight for civil rights after attending a lecture by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at the University of Toronto in the late 1960s. At that time, Toronto's African-Canadian community was organizing rallies, demonstrations and teachings on issues that affected people of African descent globally as well as locally. Rosie Douglas became a key organizer and frequent speaker at events championing causes affecting people of African descent in Canada and internationally. From the 1960s to the 1970s, Roosevelt Douglas devoted his life to improving the rights of black people around the world. After returning to Dominica, Douglas pursued a broad range of political activity on the world stage, getting involved with the Socialist International, building relations with Cuba, the People's Republic of China, and the Soviet Union, securing hundreds of scholarships for Dominican students. In Dominica, Douglas lodged the Popular Independence Committee, with stress for full political independence from Great Britain, helping to pave the way for Dominica to become an independent nation in 1978. After serving as a senator in the post-independence government, Douglas won his seat as the MP for the Pebush constituency in 1985. He served as the International Secretary of the Dominican Labour Party, eventually becoming leader in 1992 after the death of his brother Michael Douglas. After losing the election of 1995, Rosie Douglas became Dominica's Prime Minister in February 2000. He died suddenly in October of that year, shortly after his 50th birthday. In more news, users of the Capuchin Resource Center now have access to the Internet. On Sunday, five computers sourced by Dominica's ambassador to the Organization of American States, Vince Henderson, were officially handed over to the community. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Cottage Constituency, which includes Capuchin, Reginald Austri, addressed the handing over ceremony. Now, as you know, the whole world has gone in the direction of ICT, which is a tool, and Mr. Bennett and Jim will explain to you exactly what it means. But you must have heard about the internet and all these fancy things which you can only get through the use of the computer. The computer has become probably one of the most important tools of learning because you don't have to go in a classroom but you can sit at your home and if you know how to use the computer then you can school yourself 
and it's so broad that you can access information from the computer information you probably access in a school in a month you can access it through the computer within a couple minutes seconds days hours so that is a very important tool but there's also the downside to it which is if you don't use it properly it could have some negative influences on you as an individual and a community he emphasized how the need for access to ICT was important for his community. But even if you have access to education and you, not, you don't have the tools, it could still pose a challenge to you. So that is why we believe that the issue of the internet and the issue of computer allows you to utilize the access to secondary school or to high school or to college to your best advantage. And so I believe that this children, the school children, and the parents and the adults from Kabushin will be shortchanged because they were not, the, the, the computer was not accessible. And so that is why with the jolting and the assistance we have brought today, we have brought internet access and computers to the Kabushin community. The cottage MP stated that this step is just one in government's thrust to create access to education. Now the government has made education accessible to every single Dominican. From the preschool as we know it, to primary school, to secondary school where you have universal access to secondary education, where every child who writes the common entrance exam have a seat at a high school. And then even at the college level, the government has tried its best to ensure that everybody who wants to attend the Dominican State College would be given the opportunity to do so. So we have expanded the college. So like 10 years ago, where you had 200 students in the college, you now have 1,200 students at college. And you don't have to be bright. You don't have to have a big surname to go to the college. Once you want to go to college, then you will go to college. We have made the fees, we paid schooling for you. Even from here, we've been paying transportation to get you to the college. We support you with your books to go to the college. So there's no reason why a child today, if they want to go to college, cannot go to college. To high school, we're providing you with books, we're providing you with transportation, free transportation. So that is why we call access to education. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative is pleased with the access to the World Wide Web that students in the community now have. I am very, very happy and excited that finally the students, in particular from Capuchin, no longer have to go to Portsmouth to deblush to get their homework done. We have computers, we have printer, we have scanner, we have photocopier. So even for those of your children who have to go and do SBAs, and you know sometimes they go to Portsmouth all 8, 9 o'clock, they buy the blush trying to get this done. We can now do that right here in Capuchin. And to me, that is one of the biggest advantages for the children. They can come here, they can do their homework, they can do their research uh, uh, in, a, in, in a classroom like setting. And I believe that if we make proper use of this facility, give us a couple months and you'll begin to see the beauty of having that facility established. He thanked the government of Dominica for playing a significant part in the refurbishment of the learning center. We also need to thank the government of Dominica who provided for the refurbishment of the, of, 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 the, um, of the room. Because computers are very sensitive equipment and you can have them exposed all over the place. And so we had to change the windows, we had to get the air conditioning um, 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 done, uh, we had to build the tables, we had to get the chairs, and all this was done through the assistance of the government, whether through the Ministry of Telecommunications, through the Telecoms um, um, Director, through the Minister of Telecoms, but they made that available. The month of the elderly officially came to a close with an official address on October 1st, 2016. Dominic observed the month of the elderly in September every year. The month of activities usually culminates with the observance of International Day of the Elderly on October 1st. The month of activities was held under the theme Seniors and Youth Building Age-Friendly Communities. The Honorable Minister for Youth, Justin Charles, addressed the nation on behalf of the Honorable Minister for Social Services, Catherine Daniel. This theme calls for a bridging of the generation gap. This is essential for strong and happy communities 
worldwide. I think this theme is truly pertinent in that it calls upon the youth to love, respect, and appreciate the elderly, and likewise remind the elderly that they must continue to play their role as mentors and shepherds to the youth to the very end. It suggests clearly that by harmonizing their synergies, seniors and youth can achieve better societies. Undeniably, it is in combining the wisdom and experience of the elderly with the daring and innovativeness of youth that dynamic and progressive communities evolve. The Honorable Minister issued this call to the nation. Although we have wrapped up the month of the elderly, moving forward, I urge youth groups and individuals to undertake some project aimed at bridging the gap between seniors and youth and bringing joy or comfort to the elderly. Do something significant which will be valued and appreciated for a long time. Young people, never lose sight of the fact that aging is part of the living process and that you too will join the ranks of senior citizens someday. With this in mind, do for the elderly today what you would have the youth do for you tomorrow. The observance of the month for the elderly is an initiative of the Dominican National Council on Aging. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Let's have some fun, eh? I'm not ready for your kind of fun yet. But everybody else is doing it. But I'm not everybody else. I'm me, and I want to do well in school. Well, you definitely get an A for attitude. I plan to get an A in life, and then I think of your kind of fun. So what am I to do in the meantime? You'll survive. Say no when you're not ready. Use condoms when you are. Welcome back. 19 youth were on Saturday, October 1, awarded for their outstanding contributions in various fields by the executive of the National Youth Council. President of the National Youth Council, Senator Jaisaya Benoit, applauded the nominees at the 2016 award ceremony for their achievements. We can see that young people are contributing to every aspect of Dominica's development. Whether we speak of the performing arts, in music, in dance, whether it's visual arts, in painting, we can see our young persons making very significant contributions. Our sportsmen and women continue to make us proud at the Windward Islands level, at the international level as well. We are therefore hosting this award ceremony to establish a platform by which we can highlight your strengths, demonstrate your capacity to lead today. President's Award represented to Eulina Ordain and Fire Lander. The Academic and Extracurricular Excellence Award went to Lana Honore. The Beyond Expectations Award, Cassim Luis. The Esteemed Challenge Award, Cassian Ravalier. The Esteemed Volunteer Award, Nadia Rivier. Excellence in Leadership Award, Natasha Gervier. Kalinago Youth Award, Natasha Green. Outstanding Community Youth Organization, Rotaract Club of Roseau. Outstanding Youth in Music, Marvin Marie. Outstanding Youth in Agriculture, Royce Williams. Outstanding Youth in Literacy Arts, Lorna Gist. Outstanding Youth in Media, GIS's Kadisha St. Louis. Youth in Visual Arts, Shadrach Burton. Youth in Performing Arts, Ansel Prince. Entrepreneurship, Linva Ambo. Youth Organization with Faith Based Achievement, Emma Barnes. Outstanding Youth in Sports, Shani Angol, and Promotion of Local Culture, Travis Joseph. Senator Minwa told awardees on Saturday that they have an immense responsibility. I'd like to challenge you, those that will receive awards this evening, over the next 12 months, do your best to pass on the skills and talent that you have to some young person within your community. 
Try your best to create a forum and avenue by which you can dialogue with young persons on your area of focus, whether it be sports, academics, leadership, or visual arts. Just name it. Be a leader. The council is willing to work with you to continue to highlight your success and to make the, not only the country but the world know that we are proud of you. Meanwhile, the NYC president told attendees at the ceremony that the youth organization is serious about making its contribution to Dominica's development. Just as the National Youth Council 10 years ago contributed significantly to the process of the passage of our first youth policy in the parliament, we are now also deeply involved in partnership with the Youth Development Division and central government to review our national youth policy. This document, believe it or not, will greatly influence what opportunities are available to you, the young persons in the near future, and to successive generations of youth, at least over the next 10 to 15 years. We therefore have a responsibility to make sure that what is in that policy is reflective of what we, the young persons, see as the most critical needs to our development. Last weekend, the Ministry of Youth, Sports, Culture and Constituency Empowerment collaborated with the Embassy of the People's Republic of China to host a delegation of the China National Opera and Dance Drama Theatre. His Excellency President of Dominica Charles Savre and Mrs. Savre, the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs Francine Barron, other members of Cabinet, as well as scores of Dominican and Chinese nationals attended a grand concert at the Arab House of Culture on Sunday. The Honorable Minister for Culture, Youth and Sports, Justina Charles says, this is yet another tangible demonstration of the existing relations between the two countries. Cultural cooperation programs and performances such as this will create greater understanding, tolerance, respect, solidarity and friendship among people of different cultures and ultimately lead to peace among the nations and the world. Indeed, these are the core values which underpin the relationship between Dominica and the People's Republic of China over the past 12 years. Yes, 12 years of mutual love, understanding and respect. For those of you who were not at last evening's concert, here's some of what you missed. And that's the news coming up next, your tip of the day. There is a silent, invisible killer in our midst. A killer which largely goes unnoticed as it plies its deadly trade. Its name is secondhand tobacco smoke. 
which has a far greater impact on persons inhaling this poison than on smokers themselves. Secondhand tobacco smoke is especially detrimental in public places and negatively impacts our national health as well as public health expenditure. Stop this invisible killer now. Say no to secondhand tobacco smoke in public places. A public health message brought to you by the Ministry of Health and the Pan American Health Organization. The flag of the Commonwealth of Dominica consists of a circular emblem of red bearing a Cicero parrot standing on a twig encircled by 10 lime green stars. This is superimposed on three vertical and three horizontal stripes of yellow, black and white forming a triple colored cross against a background of forest green. The central emblem presents the national bird of Dominica, the Cicero parrot, also a symbol of flight towards greater heights and fulfillment of aspiration. The parrot also comes from the Dominica coat of arms, thus symbolizing the official seal of the country. The ten lime green stars, the traditional symbol of hope, represent the ten parishes of the country, each with equal status, thus the equality of all people. The red central emblem symbolizes Dominica's commitment to social justice. That's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Shakira Peer. And I'm Mervyn Matthew. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.